What's up, everybody? Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. These next couple of weeks, we are celebrating one year anniversary of the podcast launching. And so Jonathan, and I thought it would be fun if we kind of recapped some of our favorite moments over the last year and some of your guys' favorite moments. So what you're going to be hearing today are some of our literally favorite moments of a couple episodes uh, that took place over that last year. And that's, what's going to play out over the next several weeks. So no guests live in the studio. I'm not sharing thoughts. We just know that there's so many new listeners, you know, over these last 12 months and we've grown so much in, in recent months, we want to kind of recap those highlights for you. So that's what you're going to experience. I hope that you love it. Hope that you share it. And we're going to be back in the next, next couple of weeks with some amazing content, some incredible guests, and I appreciate you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Uh, well, late winter 2020, so maybe February time frame, um, I was introduced to something called the G-Code, all right? And Jonathan's like, shit, the G-Code? Like, I mean, what may this be? <laughs> no, you, you, definitely, you gave me the book. I gave you the book, all yeah. right? And so, um, anyway, great friend of mine, mentor, coach, uh, Ryan Stuman, um, Founded, founder of Apex, my coaching network. Um, you know, he wrote this book, G Code. And the thing that's incredible about Ryan is how he takes very difficult things um, and simplifies it. Real practical, easy steps to take, measurables, like what's measured is accomplished, right? Things like that. And so, what I'm going to do over a couple episodes is just quickly, just nuggets, just kind of introduce people to the G Code. Um, if it's something that resonates with you guys, jump on Amazon, pick up the book. Uh, it's a great book, and honestly, it's probably the best, like, $7 of your life yeah, you spend. Or, or come on down to the office. We have hundreds of Or copies. swing by, because I give them to every single, you know, employee, every single trainer that comes on. Everybody gets a copy of the G-Code as part of orientation, because um, it's made a huge impact, you know, in my life. And, um, you know, in thousands and thousands and thousands of, of, of other people as well. So the first thing I want to uh, talk to you about, you know, the G-Code consists of really four things. Uh, gratitude genetics, your grind, and your group. All right. So today I'm going to talk about gratitude. And, you know, it's part of the, the G code, you know, it's, it's, you start your day with what are the, what are five things you're thankful for? All right. Everybody wakes up and they grab their phone. Most people do. And it's like, let's see what surprises the night brought, particularly if you're like our listeners, most of which are, are small business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, self-employed, high level executives, um, you know, high level salespeople, things like that. Work is always happening. And like me, I have a tough time sleeping because I'm always worried about what am I missing? And maybe worried isn't the right word, but I'm wondering, what am I missing? Yeah, here we go. Thank you to rain. If you ever want to pitch in some funds, we, you are the orange. What is that? The orange cream? Yeah, I'm really not even a fit. like I like rain, but I'm not a fan of the flavor and I still drink them because I they love work. I they love work. the orange cream. and It's good. But so that's one thing I'm thankful for is the orange cream uh, rain energy drink. But you know, so every day the G code teaches, you know, every day start the day with gratitude. What are five things that I'm thankful for? Right. And people are like, oh, I don't know. I just woke up. I'm like, yeah, you do know. Because the day is about to bring a bunch of bullshit because that's what days do. Even the good days bring some BS along with them. And so it's, it's really just a, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset piece. And it's, it's just a little simple trick. So every day I wake up, I open up my G code app. It's a free app. You can sign up for, there's an app. Right? There's an app. I'm behind the eight ball. Come on now. And every day you go in and you put in five things I'm thankful for. For me, there's some recurring things. My wife, my children, you know, dogs are often a part of, you know, that scenario, my home, my mother, my staff, opportunities, challenges. Um, I, I got through my workouts today. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that the previous day. Um, it, it could be anything. Every day it looks different. But for me, there's a couple staples. My wife and my kids, for instance, they're always on the list. You know, challenges are something that I put on there because we always have challenges. But I'm thankful for the challenges because I really believe that if there were no challenges, there would not be any growth. And so it does not mean that I just come bopping into the office, just, you know, all glorious and happy and excited every day. No, that's not. But my day starts with gratitude before anything else. 99% of the time. Some days 
grab the phone and before I get my app open, there's already a notification. And it may delay me getting to, to focusing on what are the good things in life? What am I thankful for? What am I grateful for? And that's it. It's just reframing your day, reframing the mindset, starting it with gratitude. Because regardless of how shitty you feel like things are, there are things to be thankful for. Yeah, and that's right? something I think that people have a hard time realizing. Because, I mean, if you went to bed sad, angry, depressed, anxious, and then you wake up, it's hard to think of five things that you're really thankful for because oftentimes you just kind of wake up in that same mindset. For sure. And here's the thing. You woke up. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be. People complicate everything. Right. Well, what am I grateful for? Well, I didn't get that promotion. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I'm thankful for my work. But are you thankful that you have the means to pay your bills and to provide for your family? Take care of your kids? I mean, it, there's so much more in our lives that are good and positive than there are negatives. And I don't care anybody's situation, but something as simple as I'm thankful I, I woke up. I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for that I have an opportunity because I'm here, because I woke up. There's people today that won't go home to their families. There are people today who will go to bed tonight, pass in their sleep. They didn't plan on it. Nobody woke up this morning like, I'm going to die in a car wreck. Nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Th this is the type of stuff that, that happens day in and day out. And it's like, man, I'm, I woke up today. It's a good day. And I feel like for somebody like me, I have a hard time like reaching deep to think of like, I guess those existential gratitude type of things. Like sure. I'm happy that I'm here and I was, I woke up in this situation that yeah. I woke up in. Sometimes I just have to keep it simple. Wake up and thank the Lord for Pittsburgh Steeler football. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. Be thankful for Steeler football. I don't get it personally, but hey, that's you. That's Katie. Do you. But guys, just, just think about that. Like when you wake up, do this for me. For the, for the next two weeks, if you're listening, you're watching on YouTube, whatever, which last night at the volleyball game, someone came up. They're like, Josh, I'm loving the podcast. I watch it every week. I'm like, hold up. You watch? He goes, every week, YouTube. Jonathan, you're making a difference, baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, but do me a favor. For the next two weeks, guys, when you wake up, all right, you, th this, will, this will become habit, and this will take seconds. When you wake up, jot down. Maybe you put it in notes on your phone. Maybe you send it to yourself as an email. Maybe you write it in a notebook. I would recommend downloading the G code app. All right. Um, it's free again. Just register and, and you're set. Jot down five things that you're thankful for. Do that for two weeks and then let us know. Email us big dog podcast at joshwilson.dog. Comment, you know, on the post, you know, online, you know, in, in the reviews, let us know if you've noticed any changes. I promise you, I guarantee you, you'll start to see changes in your day. I'm not telling you you're winning big and all of a sudden these things start happening, but mentally framework wise, you are going to feel different and the negative stuff, a lot of times the little things that, that compound nonstop, you're already beating their ass when you wake up because you took 30 seconds to focus on five things that you're grateful for. Right? And the G code is made up of really four things. It's made up of gratitude, which I spoke about in a previous episode, genetics that we'll talk about today, your grind, work, and your group, all right? And so today I'm going to talk about the genetics part of it. And the genetics part, you know, is really focused on, hey, did you move your body today? Did you exercise? Um, did you stick to a diet? And, you know, it's not that there's a diet to stick to. There's not necessarily a workout plan you know, that, that you've got to do. It's just, did you move your body? Did you do something? And are you paying attention to what you're eating? Because, right, like the quick, you know, 30-day fix for everybody, Jonathan, doesn't work for everybody. You know, in my life, you know, I'm a guy who's been heavy most of my life, and I've tried all the things, and all the things worked for a moment um, and then stopped working, <laughs> you know, when we were, when we were done with it. So, you know, because it's just, it's a quick fix deal that, that people mess with and, and do. So this isn't telling you specifically what to do. It's just telling you to do something. 
and track it and pay attention to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does. But I came in with the assumption that genetics meant what you were born with, and I was happy because I'm pretty cute. Thought I had that step. Well, covered. look, hey, I mean, the, the thing is, um, <laughs> it does. But because you, you don't, you can't control, well, you can control your genetics to a certain extent, right? Like, and that's why there isn't like set diets. That's why there isn't set workouts. It's saying you need to do something because for what you to do is going to be better than what I need to do for my genetics, right? So you got to find what works for you, what you can stick to, what you can maintain. And I talked about the app in the, in the gratitude uh, episode, you know, the G code app, it's free and you can check it out. You know, when you download it and you get logged in, you know, you put in there, you're like, all right, the first thing I do in the morning, I put in, or I write down in my book, you know, what are five things you're grateful for? Then it asks you, did you work out today? Did you stick to your diet? You know, did you have any wins today? That's what we're going to talk about in the next episode when we're talking about the grind. And so this app here, or you can write it down, keep it in notes, whatever. I do both. Um, it's just a matter of doing it. And you get points for it. So if you're competitive, right, it's like tallying these points and it's building them up, building up, building up. So you feel like you're winning. And not only are you doing these things, like when we talked about the gratitude episode, it's like I'm, I'm starting my day off with what are five things that I'm thankful for? What am I grateful for? That's a mindset shift. You know, I'm putting in, hey, I did exercise today. Maybe it was just a walk that day. Maybe you got throwing some weights. Maybe you got on the bike. Maybe, it, you know, it could be a walk with your family. It could be anything. But did you exercise? Did you move your body? You know, and did you stick to a diet? Could have been anything. Did I just not have Chick-fil-A for the third time today? Right? Like, hey, all right, I didn't, you know. Third time today or third time <laughs> no, this week? No, not in one day. Jeez Louise. But like, oh, okay, I grabbed Chick-fil-A. Did I choose the grilled chicken over you know, a 12 count and a spicy chicken. All right. We want to make sandwich. our lives better, not sacrilege. <laughs> that's what that is. Look, Logan's talking about how the Bojangles sandwich is the best one that's out there. It is. I just had it for the first time. It was pretty damn tasty. I don't, my thing is, is Chick-fil-A is like the Chipotle of chicken. It's like, is Chipotle pretty decent Mexican food? Yeah, but is it the best? No, it's just the fastest and the most universally standard no, That's quality. good because they had the standard and yeah. the experience. It's a good experience, too. You don't really have a bad experience if you go to Chick-fil-A. Yeah, but Bojangles is where the soul is. Bojangles, the spicy Supreme's tenders. Look, guys, this does not fall into the diet you should be eating, clearly. We're telling you um, what to avoid. Yeah, we're telling you what to avoid. It keeps the line shorter for me. But, um, yeah, so the G-Code makes up these four things that you focus on daily. And you create these habits that you fall into. And, you know, it, if you're competitive by nature, you're a numbers person, you almost force yourself into you're like, damn, I don't want to answer this no. I want to answer yes. And if I don't answer both these yes, I'm not getting the points. So it's just kind of an easy little life hack to get you dialed in and more focused on prioritizing your health and well-being, right? Yeah, and also I think it's really huge um, that the G-Code app specifically focuses on accountability because a lot of 100%. people don't have that accountability partner. Like what do people always say? It's easier to work out. If you have a workout right. buddy, yeah. well, not everybody has that because not everybody's right. willing to work you out. You got somebody meeting you at the gym, though. The odds of you not showing up are slim. Yep. Right? So here, you know, this, the, the G-Code, and then there's a community online, too, Facebook group you could be a part of and, and whatnot. But it, it's just a, it's a very simple life hack that at the end of the day gets you dialed in, gets you focused, gets clarity, and you're just generally going to feel better. There's nothing difficult to it. It's not science. It's just making a decision. Super yeah. simple. I'm going to have to give that a try because I've tried other stuff like the Fitbit apps and things of that nature. And yeah. it's just like a metric keeping app. But this sounds like a, a holistic lifestyle change. For sure. The whole thing is and download it. Download it today. And we'll start on, on every Monday morning. We'll text each other and we'll see what our scores are from the previous week. Sounds That's good. what we'll start doing. That's easy. And guys, you should do that too. You should talk to your family. Talk to your friends about it. Download it and check it out. And we've talked about gratitude we talked about genetics and today we're going to talk about your grind and your work where that energy goes um and the thing that's you know we've talked about the g-code app now you know for several weeks i uh, we encourage y'all to download it um you know still doing the deal you shoot an email to big dog podcast at josh wilson.dog put g-code in the subject name and address in the body of the email and we're going to get copy of the G-Code book by my guy Ryan Stuman sent out to you. Um, 
And so the grind, though, is very interesting because, again, we've talked about gratitude, starting your day with it. We've talked about the genetics. We're paying attention to what we're eating. Or are we moving our body daily? Um, some sort of exercise and, and the grind, the work. It's like, all right, where are we getting all of this stuff? not balanced together, but where are we making all these things a norm? Because a thing that you do is a normal deal every day is you go to work. That's like the thing you don't really think about for most people, right? We don't think about our gratitude. We don't think about necessarily genetics, but everybody's thinking about work just about each day because you got to go somewhere. Most people, most people got to get up and go somewhere to go to work. Mm -hmm. Um, What people don't necessarily think about day in and day out and what the G code forces you to think about and prioritize is what were your wins today? So we start the day out with gratitude and we're ending the day with what were the wins? And maybe that win, you know, had nothing to do with work, but the win was that you happened to be able to work your day in such a way, control your day in such a way that you were able to make it to your kid's soccer game and you've missed the last two. That's a win today Mm -hmm. because of your grind. Like you were putting in the work, you prioritize your schedule that day. And the, the big win for that day, I made it to my kid's soccer game on time, saw the whole thing, got to see the goal get scored, whatever. Right. It might be a win for the day of, Hey, I have a goal of, you know, 30 sales calls. I need to make, you know, by lunch every day today I made 30 sales calls, and I booked my biggest deal of the month. Those are wins. Yep. Right? And I think you're touching on something important because when it comes to, quote, unquote, the grind, it's the most concrete, like you said, everybody goes to work, but it's also the most abstract because when you compare yourself to somebody else, that's typically the norm. It's like, how hard am I grinding versus how hard is somebody else grinding? Yep. So I think it's important, and the G-Code does this, is to – really organize your wins and make them practical. Well, yeah, because, and we've talked about this in other episodes before too, you know, playing your own game, right? My wins are different than your wins. Your wins are different than mine because we're playing different games. And it doesn't mean one game is harder than the other. One game is better than the other. It's your game to play. And so what is that win for the day? Your wins on Thursdays may look different than your wins on Friday. But the point is we're starting our days off with gratitude and we're ending it with what was our win? And it might just be one, but how easy is it to default to walk in the door? Hey, babe, how was your day? Man, fuck it. It was crazy. It, you know, and, and you start jawing about all the things that drove you nuts that day. One, your partner, your kids, they don't want to hear that mess. No, I mean, we ask, how's your day? But no one really cares to hear the griping. But how hype is it if you can condition your mind to where, how's your day? Oh, man, it was the best. I got through my calls, made the biggest deal of, of the week today. It was great. Man, think about, the, think about the tone of your house that evening. Right? Think about the tone like your kids have towards you if that's what they hear. Like, holy cow. Like, dad comes home every day. Mom comes home every day. And we're like, how was the day? And they're t- like, they win every single day. Because no matter how poor your day was, there is a win in every day. If you can't think of a win that you have, maybe you were just on time to your job. And that's your win for the day. And timeliness is a struggle. You know, we were supposed to record at 830 today. I texted you at 830 on the phone with Katie in the parking lot. You got in here at 835. Yeah. Lighten up a little bit. Yeah, I was be, late, though. Be less difficult uh, on yourself. <laughs> but I was late. I was late. And I'm not known for being late. I'm known for being late into the studio. I mean, that's, that's fair. Um, but you know what I mean? They're like, what is the win? Everybody's got a win in the day. Yeah, and that goes back to how you qualify your wins. If you're expecting your win to be a massive sale, or a massive victory every single time out, you're going to come away disappointed. For sure. And it can, it, like you said, it can be something as simple as showing up on time. If yeah. you win at the small things, and we've talked about this plenty of times before, if you win at the small things, the bigger things will come at up. less of a cost and yeah, everything will compound. Our sales team, and we talk about sales a lot. We talk about goals and stuff a lot on the podcast because that's a lot of our, our listeners and stuff. But 
you know, with, with our sales team here at Off Leash, you know, follow up is a big deal. You know, people reach out to us because they have a need for their dog. Uh, all the proof of what we can accomplish for them is, is out there. It's online. Our reputation is out there. Um, but it's a big commitment. And that's not always made on the initial phone call or the initial email they send out. And so we follow up with them. We make sure they have all the information that they need to make the uh, appropriate decision for themselves. And a, a win for them when they are able to book a client, you know, is because, hey, yeah, I did the work. I followed up with this person umpteen times, you know, and, and yeah, they, they finally book. That's awesome. That's a win because we did the work to create that opportunity. Whereas if you just talk to them the first time and we never reached back out, we're not doing the work. That client probably ends up going somewhere else um, because we didn't give them what they deserve, which was the effort of taking the time to reach out and follow up. That's yeah. a win. And I think that's super insightful because you're not only saying that a win can be the end result, but a win can be the effort that you put in the process um, in, in the process, because you might not have put that effort in Yep. at a different time. Yep. And that's it. And, and this is the same thing. Like wh what was your win today? It, a lot of people will center this around their work, but it literally can apply to anything. And again, it comes back to that little life hack starting that day with gratitude, getting that mindset right. And you're also ending your day, you know, with a, a sense of gratitude, you know, where did I win today? And it, it's this shift. And it's when you're doing these subtle things day in and day out, it changes how you think. It changes how you view yourself. It changes how you view the people that are around you. It changes your priorities and it changes all these things in the best way possible. So. You know, we've talked about gratitude. We've talked about genetics. Today we talked about that grind and ending your day with, with what you're thankful for. What, not what you're thankful for, I'm sorry, but what was that win? It's a big deal. It's these little simple practices that take really maybe 90 seconds of your entire day to jot down and focus on. And the fourth um, that we're going to talk about today, Jonathan, is your group. All right. And a group being, who do you spend your time with? Who do, who's your circle? Who are you surrounded by? And, you know, one of the things that Ryan talks about in his book, and I think is super valuable, um, is we have, you, you can control who you surround yourself with, right? You control who's in your circle. Mm -hmm. You can't control your family of origin, but you have 100% control over your family of choice. And you can create new family. You can create new friends. Um, and a, a big thing that he talks about and that I agree with a lot and I think has been super prevalent in my life over the years, and we talked about it even on, on previous episodes, is just because people start with you doesn't mean they can go with you. And they, most of them probably won't finish with you either. And, you know, a thing that's interesting is like that family of choice. So, you know, within Apex, I joined in March of 2020. You know, these are people that, you know, we're supposed to be in Dallas every month. My schedule this year has been crazy and I'll be there next month mm -hmm. uh, in October, but I haven't been out there since May. I still talk to guys and girls in the group, um, you know, weekly, monthly, but I'm not there. We're, we, we try to get there once a month to be together. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a, a group of like minded people, all different backgrounds, um, you know, profession, skill sets, level of business. But the commonality is they're high achievers, you know, they grind hard, um, good human beings, um, no judgment, a lot mm -hmm. of accountability, and they're there to support each other. Yeah. And as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as high level executives, you know, high level salespeople that are in that group, you know, it's a, sometimes it's hard to find people that can kind of wrap their head around what it is that, that they're going through. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Especially because there could be people who are operating in businesses where it's like, there might not be any immediate competition, but there's also not anybody to learn from or group up with right. either. And so for me, I mean, there's, I'm probably a low dog on the totem pole for sure in the room. I mean, there's billion dollar businesses in there, you know, you know, multiple, you know, eight figure businesses in there. There's people, you know, that 
you know, just start starting out. Um, but I'm definitely low end. And, and the reason I, I wanted to, to get into that group was to do that, to surround myself by people that maybe aren't necessarily where I'm trying to go, but they've been through things and aspects of business on their path and their journeys where I can learn and there's experience. And I've got some experiences that I can share also that'll help somebody. Yeah. And so it's it's not a competition thing in these rooms. Mm -hmm. It is a how can we help each other? You know, this is it's a safe spot. We can share, we can push each other, we can motivate each other. And so that apex, you know, in, in my group there, that is that is part of my family of choice. You know, I I choose to invest in them. They choose to invest in me. Um we choose to commit significant amount of resources, you know, to, to make this happen. Um, you know, my friends, I, I don't have a huge group of friends that I run around with, you know, all the time. Um, used to be a lot more social, you know, than I am now. But the thing is, people aren't tracking with me, like, and I can't expect them to. Um, if I was still running around with a lot of people from 15, 20, 25 years ago, um, some of them I still do, but if they're not on the same mission as me, if they don't have the same focus as me, not saying one is better than the other, but you can't let it hold you back. And so oftentimes, you know, our friends, um, that come up with us, most people get stuck in the, in the same cycle. And if you want to move beyond you got to surround yourself with people that are in alignment with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm sure the audience will hear it on a future episode if we ever decide to go into my background and stuff, but I've yeah. definitely run with some uh, less than desirable groups. Sure, yeah. And um, I think it's important you noted that you need people who are there to push you to grow and not yep. necessarily a group that is there just to support you. Because I've been in circles who are there right. where it's just solely yes man or just support yeah. and you don't grow that way well and it's supporting you to do better as long as it's not better than me yeah that's right? also another so, really big mentality <laughs> here's here's the support you're fine but you got to stay in your lane of this bubble that we're in mm -hmm. and you know you can go ahead and, and chase your dreams and your desires but make sure you're at the house you know by 10 so we can get out to the club and go do our things and next thing you know the weekend's gone. You're rolling into Monday. You're tired. You're hung over. You're exhausted. You're not mentally prepared to go. Like you can't, you can't do those things. I, we get invited to stuff all the time. There's plenty of hours in the day that we can go and do things, mm -hmm. but I make decisions based on my time and my energy. What's the best use of it and going and chilling out just cause it's Friday and drinking and doing whatever that group of people Love them. Nothing wrong with it. We just got different goals. And if I go get on those goals, they're like, oh, why do you work so much? Like, what the hell? Man, can you get off your phone for a little bit? <laughs> can you get off your phone? Can you just focus, be dialed in in this moment? I'm like, why? Why? Like, why aren't you working more? You're bitching about your circumstance. <laughs> Complete. Why, why aren't you working right now rather than being a case deep? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so it's, you got to make these decisions. And so for me, it just starts, you know, because there's, a, hey, can you come hang out? Hey, can we get together for lunch? Hey, can we do this and that? And you either with those groups, you either have to have those difficult conversations to push them away or just stop responding because you're focused on other things and they get the idea. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think it's important to note that just because someone isn't meant to be in your group, like people can be around you yes. for a lifetime or be in your life for a season. And it doesn't mean because they're not meant for that particular season in your life that you have to kind of banish them from the group. Yeah. You just kind of have to set healthy boundaries. Like, Hey, yeah. on Fridays, I'm just not replying to you because I stay late at the office. You like to go out and yep. it's just something as simple as that. And people can take it however they may. Right. A lot of people though get sensitive about it. And when people get sensitive, like that's stuff where I just don't have the energy for it. And oh, so yeah. you have to, again, you know, it's like, Hey, this person, is draining me. This individual's activities are draining me. This person's um, support <laughs> is lack of a better word is draining me. And it's getting you off topic. You're like, Oh, well, that's my cousin. I got to go hang out with them. That's, that's my family. No, you really don't. Yeah, you don't. Because your cousin 
isn't going to be the one that helps you accomplish what it is you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's where it's like that family of origin is great. But a lot of times people's families suck. Yeah. And another important question that I think is is valuable for the listeners is how do you think people should define their groups based off social media? Because I believe we share a same school of thought where your Facebook friends or your Instagram followers are not your group. They don't define your norms or how you should be moving daily. Yeah. So that's really funny. So, um, you know, the last 18 months, my social media has taken a total shift. When I, when I log in, it's typically for work, um, doing some posts or whatever. And then, um, but when I scroll either my Instagram or Facebook, all I see is my family of choice. All I see is positive things. All I see is encouragement. All I see is um, my family of choice winning. Like I, it is rare. If I'm scrolling and I see some bullshit, I just go to the three dots, right? Unfollow. Mm -hmm. It is done. And I don't care if I've known them for 30 years. If there's some BS complaining and like just Nate, like I just, I'm out, you know, cause it's not, it's not a relationship that to me is active. It's just one that's there and people get hung up cause they're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And they got all these friends, but it's all BS. Yeah. And it's like, there's just no need for it. Like when Devin's on Facebook, she wants to see p- pictures of people's kids. She wants to see stuff like that. If anybody's got BS political stuff, she's just like unfollow, unfollow. Cause you don't, you don't realize like what you're consuming and how much negativity. Yes. And it's all there. And so for me, all I see is people winning. And Mm -hmm. when I see all my friends winning, I'm like, I got to step up. I want to win. Or I'm like, man, so-and-so is crushing it. They're 26 years old. I'm 42 damn years old. Like I got work to do because that's that, but that's what drives me. So my family of choice who I've brought in, like it motivates me. It helps me to be the best version of me. And I'm not the best version of me right now, but hopefully the work I'm doing today is going to help me be a better version of me tomorrow and the work I do tomorrow to be a better version of me the next day. But if I'm constantly battling with energy against the negativity with family of origin or, or old friend groups and things like that, that just don't fit who you are now. It doesn't mean, like you said, to your point, that season, they weren't an important part of that. Every relationship has value. Good or bad outcome, there is value. There are lessons learned. There's that season, but people get hung up. It's like, well, man, they've been with me for 25 years. They got to stay with me. We've been friends since elementary school. I've made it. I got to bring them with me. No, you don't. You don't have an obligation to do that. You have to look out for yourself. You got to look out for your, your, your children. <laughs> You know, your spouse, your immediate family. And the real, really the only obligation that you have to people who I guess are no longer in your group or who you don't really run with is, like we said earlier, just continue to be a good person. None of, yeah. none of this conversation excludes you from being a good nope. person to those who aren't in your For group. For sure. It's just, it, it just, it's, un, it's unnecessary energy. Exactly. We all have a limited amount of energy and time. Mm-hmm. And the more you can get it dialed in on the things that, um, are suitable, like with your goals. And these aren't professional goals. Personally, how do you want your life to look? How do you want your day to be? And people don't think about that. Everybody's so reactive. And it's just, and if you just are constantly pummeling yourself with that negativity because of the people you choose to have in your group, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. It'll kill you emotionally. It'll kill you, kill you physically. It'll kill you spiritually. It was where you slam out. So, you know, it, that group is so important, guys. Your group of origin or your family of origin doesn't necessarily need to be the same as your family of choice. Um, if you've been listening or watching, you know, over the last several weeks as we've gone through this, you know, one of the things that you've started to pick up on, if you've been implementing some of the steps that we've been talking about, is our superpower that's unspoken that we all know about. If you've gotten into the book, you heard Ryan talk about it, though, and that we all have that one superpower of focus. And that's really what if you've been implementing these steps that we've been talking about the last month. If you really think about it, that's what you've been noticing is an improvement in overall focus. 
Um, and, and that's where, as, as Ryan puts it, we use our superpower of focus to combat the force of average. And the force of average is everything in life that battles against you to distract you from what it is your true purpose and calling in, in life. Um, you know, so, you know, gratitude, how we start the day, five, five things that we're, we're thankful for, that we're appreciative of, right? Get that mindset right for the day. The genetics, what am I putting into my body? Am I moving my body during the day? Are we prioritizing that? The grind, the work, what were the wins that day? What was something positive, um, you know, that happened? What was a win that we had, you know, with regards to work, with regards to our team, with regards to our uh, ever ending to do list, right? Those critical tasks that we're working on. Did we win the day by accomplishing those things? That's the grind. Then that group, like who are we surrounding ourselves with, Jonathan? Uh, who are we spending our time with? Who are we um, being filled up by and who are we pouring into? You know, are the people in our life just constantly draining us of energy? Um, are their goals so far out of alignment with our own personal goals that they're distracting us from being the best version of ourselves, you know, or are they people that at the end of the day, they're just for me, their goals are different than mine and they, they, they may be and should be, but even though there's differences between us, are we still for each other and are we helping each other accomplish what it is that we're trying to do? Mm -hmm. And so all four of those pieces combined, if you really focus on those things, and you get them in, in alignment with, with who you are, the clarity comes, the focus comes. And all of a sudden you start seeing when you're focused, and this is with anything, right? This is whether you're in the studio working on your music, whether I'm you know, working on recruiting or I have a dog that I'm working with or a particular uh, client for a particular session. If I'm completely dialed in and I'm the best version of myself in that moment, my focus is out of control. And what I'm able to accomplish in those moments is probably far more than someone who's distracted is able to accomplish in hours, days, weeks, months. Yeah. Right. And I think the biggest thing for me, because if you've been listening, you know that we at the Big Dog Podcast have been kind of going back through the G code and doing this ourselves. The biggest thing for me has been that that sense of focus that I gained by attempting and trying to complete the four steps. Yeah. I've gained a sense of urgency as well, because I feel like a lot of times we're aware of the issues that we're having, or we're aware of the challenges that we face, yeah. but we might not necessarily attack them with a sense of urgency because we have so many other things going on in our lives. Well, yeah. And I think that's a big part that, that comes into play um, for anybody who attempts to implement the G code into their life is the simplicity of it. Like these aren't crazy things that you have to blow your whole life up to try to, to plug in. Yeah. It's not a drastic overall lifestyle change, No, but the results of implementing these simple things is a drastic life change. Exactly. And a complete overhaul really. And it, it's, it simplifies life to the point that really anything that you want out of life, you can get to, you can accomplish because you're just worried about four simple tasks. Yep. And those four simple tasks are now your barometer for your day. And it just changes everything, how you look at it. It just makes it so, so simple. For sure. You know, and you're not worried about, and we've talked to previous episodes, like keeping up with the Joneses and what's going on over here and what's going on over there. None of that matters. What am I thankful for today? Did I, did I get a workout in? Did I not eat fast food twice today? <laughs> you know, did I accomplish the critical tasks at work? Did I spend time, you know, with, with my family? Who did I focus my time on today? Who did I focus my energy on today? And some days it is my family. Some days it's you. Some days it's the admin team. Some days it's my trainers. Some days it's me getting on a plane and go into another location and focus in on that team of trainers. Some days it's me. Some days I got to be the group because I, me and all my personalities have to come together and I got to focus in on them and keep everybody 
in check. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think what you're also saying is that if some days you need to take a me day mm-hmm. in relation to the G code and the steps that you're kind of going through, yeah. that's perfectly okay because you take a mental health day or a day to really look back at what you've accomplished or look at yourself. That might just be informing your gratitude yep. for when you do pick everything back up. Have we talked about um, the floats on here? No, I don't believe we have. Okay. So you talked about that, like that me day, right? So <laughs> last year, um, <laughs> I guess maybe September I started doing this and I haven't done it in a couple months. I, I should probably do it, but there's a thing called uh, like floating, right? And they're like pods mm-hmm. and you go to like a spa or something. Oh, this is sensory deprivation, it, right? I, some, I, I don't know what, I, again, Jonathan with the terms and I'm just not that smart. So I don't know, but it's, it's a pod and you go and I've read about it. It's like, all right, it's this salt water at body temperature. And um, you go in the float tank and you can, have it open or closed. You can have sound on or no sound. Um, It can be light or dark. There can be an array of colors or it can be pitch black. Uh, Some people don't like to close the pod um, because it's like they freak out or whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought the pod was going to be like this huge thing, like the size of the room. That was not the case. Um, The pod was more so maybe the size of this table here, the two tables. Yeah. Like width wise, a little longer wise. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe seven feet long. Once you're inside, maybe four, five feet wide. Uh, Anyway, you get in the pod. I thought, you know, it was a bunch of water because you get in there and float, right? No, son. Like my big ass gets in this float and there's maybe eight to 10 inches of water. How did that work? And I'm like, how am I going to float in this? Like, my ass is gonna be touching the bottom. <laughs> like this can't, this isn't gonna work. I'm just not gonna float in this. And so I, I was a little thrown off. I go in the room. You got to shower first, then you get in the tub. You get in the in the tank naked. You can get in there in shorts. You can do whatever you want. Thank God and they make you shower I'm like, first. But you got to rinse off everything first, and then when you get out, you have to to shower again. Okay, because it's like salt water and whatever. So anyway, you know, uh, I jump into this this tank. I pull the top down. I kill the lights. I just want it pitch black. I lay back. I'm floating immediately. I'm like, what the hell is going on? This is so weird. I was just so shocked that me, I'm floating. And in this little bit of water, I'm not touching the bottom. So next thing you know, I start having this overwhelming sense of like spinning. And I'm like, there's not room in this thing for me to spin. I can't be spinning right now. I would not stop spinning. So I flipped it open. Realize clearly I'm not rotating around. It can't happen. It's just what was happening, like sensory, like to my senses, it felt like I was rotating. So really weird. I pull the thing back down, whatever. So that first, it's an hour. You're in this thing. Then the lights cut on and it's like, all right, you're done. Please go shower. First time was super stressful, very frustrating. Second time I go, I'm asleep within five minutes in this thing. So I start going like every week. Every other week, I started rotating like a massage and a float tank. Some days I would do both. I was like, this is great. And it's a little excessive, a little bit crazy. But for me, during that time when I was doing that and prioritizing it, I was killing it. I was killing it because it was just getting a little bit of separation, focus on me. And it wasn't like, you know, I, <sighs> It wasn't like crazy stress or anything during that season, but it was just good to do something that just took all noise away because there's so much noise in my life Mm -hmm. from everywhere. And nobody knew I'd go except for like my assistant and me. I was out. Devin would know. But there was no getting a hold of me. One time I messed up, left my watch on. Sucker kept beeping and vibrating. I had to open it through the watch out. It was driving me nuts. Like you can't bring your phone in there. You shouldn't bring your phone in there. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Cause it's literally pitch black and silent for me. That was self care. So then I would start falling asleep in there, but then it got where I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'm just floating. But the ideas I was having creatively yeah. things I was coming up with, 
I'm like, this is amazing. And so that for some people it might be, Hey, I'm going for a walk in the woods. Some people it might be, I'm going to go to the gym. That's where I get my clarity. When I start throwing iron around. Blasting boys to men and driving 90 miles per hour on the interstate. There you go. Boys to men. Yep. Or you get in a float tank or you, you know, who knows what, but you've got to figure out what part of that is that works for you. That all plays into this because it helps you to get focus, right? And that self-care time is important. If you're just constantly taking care of everybody else, constantly pouring into everybody else, but you're ignoring yourself whether it's physically, mentally, whatever, that doesn't add up right. You're never going to be focused because you're always just tired. Mm -hmm. You're just tired. And that's hard to do, particularly for a lot of type A people who are fixers. You know, this can be challenging when you're focusing on what I'm grateful for. Did I focus on my genetics today? Did I focus on my work? Did I focus on my group? The work is always the easiest for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found some wins today. Because it's the most tangible. It's the most right right there. It's right there. So then for those type A's who are competitive, though, now all of a sudden you're getting points, though, for different things. You're paying attention. It forces you. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me get this point. Let me make sure I get this workout in. Or now let me make a little better choice. You know, on my food today. Um, Let me get that point. Hey, did I I jot down what I'm thankful for? You know, let me get that point. And it, it forces you. If you create it as a habit, to, am I perfect with it? No, I'm not perfect with it. I don't get in the app every day. I don't jot down in my notebook every day. But more often than not, I do. Mm-hmm. And, and that's it. I mean, some days just get away from you. But if you can get to where you, it is just without thought, the things that happen in your day, and you put these things together collectively, your life changes. Yeah, I feel like if we could say that there would be a fifth step to the G code, it would be G for getting there. Just kind of <laughs> yeah. get it, just kind of getting there. Getting there. I'm getting there. And but getting there only comes from doing. Like you've got to do it. You just got to start. That's it. It's hard for a lot of people. It's just starting. I know it's hard for me. Yeah, for sure. Anything new, right? It's like, oh, this is just another thing I've got to do. But if I if I told you. You know, that if you started this, all right, in 90 days from now, you are going to be exponentially better as a human being. Like, I guarantee it, because it's impossible for you to not be better off personally. It's impossible for you to not be better off professionally. It's impossible for you, if you're listening out there, to not be a better spouse, a better mother or father, a better sibling, a better son. It's literally impossible if you implement these things in your life three months from now to not be a better person. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like most people could look at 90 days in the future and think, okay, this is my likely paycheck. This is what I'm going to get paid because those are physical, tangible outcomes and results from the work that you put in. But when you're putting in work on these kind of abstract ideas Mm -hmm. about how to improve your mental state and not necessarily how you just physically do things. Yep. It's hard to see those tangible results for sure. But I, I would go as far as to say that in 90 days, you will see gains in your bank account. You will see gains in your hobbies, but it's hard to tell people that, you know, it's hard. It's hard to say like, Oh, you're going to see this. It's easy to tell people that it's hard to, um, for me, it's easy to tell people that, it's hard to receive that. And the thing is, this isn't like, Hey, this isn't get rich quick. This isn't, you know, do this and and you're going to see X, Y, and Z. What you will see is, is the life change. Okay. You're not going to become a gajillionaire. You know, you're not going to have an extra hundred grand in your account in 90 days. Maybe you do that. That there's plenty of people listening, plenty of friends of mine who they implement some of this stuff. Yeah. That absolutely could be their reality you know, just because of things that they do in their business. But I also know most of us out here who are listening, everything that this is about has nothing to do with money, has nothing to do with your business. By, by default, there will be improvements there. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's all about how you approach life and how you wake up in the day. And is everything negative? Is everything in the doldrums? Is everything just, ah, are we pessimistic? Mm-hmm. Or are we just waking up with a winning attitude, knowing that we're kicked today's ass, regardless of what comes? 
Yeah, because honestly, the most difficult challenge I feel like is waking up each and every day and being okay with yourself and the life that you've kind of created for yourself. And that's a hard challenge. Yeah. And I think a cool thing to play off of that, though, is just because it's a life that you've created doesn't mean it's a life that you're creating or a life that you can't change. Mm -hmm. Because and go from there. This is just where we're at right now. What steps are you doing, though, to, to move you forward? Mm -hmm. And as long as you're moving forward, I think everybody can go to bed at night knowing, hey, I'm winning. I'm moving forward. You don't have to be moving forward at a sprint. You can be moving forward at a crawl right now in a certain season of life. And that's cool. Moving forward. Getting better. Growing. Improving. And for everybody, that's different. That's where you just got to figure it out. And that's, and you start to figure it out by looking at, okay, what am I thankful for today? And you start to see that, that consistency and the things that you're grateful for. I mentioned this during the gratitude episode. For me, the consistent things are my wife, my kids, dogs. These are the consistent things that are almost always there. My wife and kids are there every day in that part. Like, cause that's the most important thing to me. And I'm so thankful for them. I'm so thankful, you know, for the, for the, the way the feedback I get from people about my kids. I'm so thankful that anytime they spend time with people that they're like, man, Hey, Logan is a really respectful young man. Hey, Logan's really willing to jump in and help out. Hey, you know, Kiki is, you know, a real strong leader. Kiki, you know, she, she's always willing to, to, to help somebody out or, or bring somebody along or, you know, Logan's always willing to have somebody included, you know, or, or notice somebody who's maybe outside of the circle a little bit and try to bring them in. Like, these are things that I'm very thankful for. And what I'm really thankful for is they got a mama who creates those things, you know, in them. Right. But that's how you start to figure out if you're unsure of what's most important to you, or you might think certain things are important to you. Start paying attention to what you put down day in and day out is what you're thankful for. And if that's not in alignment with what you think is most important to you, you got to audit yourself a little bit because you can't say the things that you're most thankful for are going to be the things that are most important to you. Now, if you've got a wife and you've got kids and what you're putting down, they're not on there. You're putting down there. I'm I, the Lambo, <laughs> my boat, my shoe collection, my, you got to reprioritize brother. Like you've got to change things up because what happens is if those are what you're prioritizing is most thankful and that's what you think is most important. That is, that is the things you're thankful for are your priorities. Got to be in alignment and you can't be thank You can be thankful for the Lambo and the shoes, but not more than your spouse and your kids. You just can't. At least I can't see how you can be. And if you are, I mean, I guess you can be. Yeah, you definitely can be. You definitely can be. But that relationship with your spouse and that relationship with your kids will be lacking sooner rather than later. Yeah. You know, and there's that, that balance piece. And so, you know, this will take you through a process day in and day out that almost centers you. You know, and you figure out what's really important and what really matters. And so I just, I, I encourage everybody everyone, as we've been doing for the last four weeks, start implementing these steps. You know, if you haven't, you know, gone on Amazon and picked up the book, we've, we've told you shoot an email to the big dog podcast at joshwilson.dog, put your name and address, you know, in the body of the email and just put G code in the subject line. Boom. We'll get a book out to you. Yep. You might even get a response from me and my sultry voice. There you go. You might even get something from Jonathan. So, you know, we'll get that sent out to you because I believe the impact on us as like as a culture, if people got dialed in and started implementing these simple, simple things, it's crazy. 